David had a lot of no and you're not good enough at every major event in his life. Welcome to The Warrior Bride. I'm Autumn Woods, and I am passionate about helping you discover, protect, and thrive in your identity in Christ as a child of God and the Warrior Bride of Christ. When your identity comes under attack by you, the enemy, or other people, when the lies about who you are start flying like flaming arrows, when you are persecuted, you have a strong tower that you can run to. This isn't about hiding under the bed from the opinion monsters. It's about winning the fight by strengthening yourself in the Lord and keeping your eyes on God in the middle of the battle so that you can continue to stand firm and move forward. In this world, you will have trouble. But be of good cheer. Jesus has overcome the world. I'm going to read Psalm 27 over you, and I want you to examine it from the perspective of battling accusing words and onslaughts against your identity as a godly man or godly woman created in the Lord's image to do great and mighty things planned by God before you were even born. Watch how David's focus determines the outcome in these encounters with the kingdom of darkness. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and foes, they stumbled and fell. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart will not fear. Though war may rise against me, in this I will be confident. One thing I have desired of the Lord That I will seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret place of his tabernacle, he shall hide me. He shall set me high upon a rock. And now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me. Therefore, I will offer sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle. I will sing. Yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me, and answer me. When you said, Seek my face, my heart said to you, Your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my help. Do not leave me or forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take care of me. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me in a smooth path because of my enemies. Do not deliver me to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me, and such as breathe out violence. I would have lost all heart unless I believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. David dealt heavily with enemies who tried to put bullet holes in his identity and stop him from completing his godly purpose. He had brothers who looked down on him and accused him of being arrogant. He had Saul, who was supposed to be his mentor, but opted to be the wicked stepfather instead. Saul unwittingly partnered with Satan to try to kill David and to prevent him from being king and continuing the messianic line. Nabal badmouthed David's character, and he hadn't even met him. His own men turned against him when their homes got ransacked when they were out of town. And even after David was crowned at Hebron, there were factions that rose against him and tried to put a false king on the throne. David had a lot of no and you're not good enough at every major event in his life. But God called David a man after his own heart, a righteous, faithful man, a king. He called David king before David had even come of age to take the throne. He called him king when no one in his family saw him as anything but the youngest little brother who sings to the sheep. God calls things that are not as though they are because he sees the end result. All of those no's from people taught David that God was the only one he could trust with his heart. He ran to Yahweh and strengthened himself in the Lord when the voices got too loud. He begins this psalm by focusing on the Lord and his supreme power. The Lord illuminates David's way and rescues him. It is God who arms him with strength. With a source like that, why should David be afraid of anyone who comes against him?
God has the final say over his life. Even though onslaughts are organized against him, David is able to function because he knows that he is established in the Lord. He doesn't fear people who can only kill the body. He reserves his fear and holy awe for the one who is able to cast him body and soul into hell, but chooses not to because the Lord delights in him. Because David loves God and believes what the Lord says about him, he knows that he will only observe with his eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. Divine punishment carried out by Yahweh, to whom vengeance belongs. Psalm 91.14 says, Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him because he acknowledges my name. Elevation and triumph over enemies are more benefits of being secure in God that will make you want to shout praises to Him from the rooftops. You see this happen in the natural and the spiritual as God brings your accusers low because of your faithfulness to Him. Demonic forces will lose their strongholds in your life as you surrender these vulnerable places of your identity to God and let Him be in charge of reinforcing the chinks in your armor and helping you cut off access points to the enemy. You'll be free to operate the way God designed you to, to share the parts of himself that he put in you that he knew this world couldn't do without. For the sake of his glory and his love for you, the Lord will teach you his ways so that you aren't put to shame in front of your enemies. This doesn't mean you're never going to face persecution or accusations again. Far from it. But it does mean that you will be able to cling to God and the promises of his goodness in this life and in the eternal one. I reiterate, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Seek him for strategies so that when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against him, and you won't try to tear it down by agreeing with the enemy's lies about you. Ask the Holy Spirit to recall to your mind the right words and scriptures so that you can focus on God, the embodiment of unchanging truth, and not fall prey to an identity crisis. If you belong to God, He has established you. You are His, and He will be with you every step of the way. I want to take a minute to pray over all of you who are struggling with accusations and attacks against your identity from within and without. Heavenly Father, we come before you humbly, we glorify you, and we bless your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You know the plans you have for us, plans to prosper and not harm us, plans to give us a future and a hope. You knew us before we were in our mother's wombs, and you value us so much that you sacrificed your Son to save us and to transfer us from a kingdom of darkness into your kingdom of light. You gave each of us a measure of your authority and anointing and crafted us with unique purposes and destiny to glorify you and bless others. Father, make our foreheads strong against the foreheads of those who would oppose us, remembering that our struggles are not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. I command and decree right now that no weapon formed up against us shall prosper, and every tongue that rises up to condemn us, Father, you will condemn. This is our heritage as the servants of the Lord, and our righteousness is from you, as your sovereign word declares. The negative, critical, destructive words of death, spoken or unspoken, written or unwritten against us by ourselves, by others, and by the enemy, will roll off of our backs like water off a duck's back. They are null and void and fall on deaf ears. They will not take root. Any agreements that we have made with the kingdom of darkness about our identity that have held us back, we break ties with them now and we destroy them by the power and blood of Jesus. We will not be wounded or halted by them. We know who we answer to, the Lord Most High. Thank you, Father, that we see through to the truth and motivation of why a hurtful thing is said, written, or thought, that we realize it really isn't about us, it's about what you say over us. So help us to push aside the shock and sting or pain of the words and cut through to the true agenda of why these things are being spoken. Help us to have discernment to address that spirit, that lie, with our feet planted firmly on the foundation that is your Son, Jesus Christ. 
Help us to wield the word of God and our weapons that are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down every thought and imagination that would exalt itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought captive to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when our obedience is fulfilled. Be with our mouths, Holy Spirit, and teach us what to say. And what then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who could be against us? Father, help us to take authority over the kingdom of darkness, invading our territories, our minds, our hearts, and attacking our identities, and help us to raise it to the ground, wrecking its plans, rejecting the lies of the enemy, the lies who have partnered with him to harm us, and even the lies that we have spoken ourselves about who we are. We are precious in your sight. Help us to remember, Father, that you have redeemed us, you have called us by name. We are yours, and we will not live below the value that you have established in us. In Jesus' name, everybody who agrees say, Amen. In the next video, we'll be discussing the importance of the first name God gave to woman and how we reflect his image in creation. If you're finding value in this content, don't forget to like, sub, share, and hit the bell. New episodes drop Saturdays at 9 a.m. See you soon.